Hey, my name is Mark Clark. I'm a pastor of a church called Village Church out in Vancouver, Canada. I uh, started the church in 2010 with about 16 people in my living room, and God has now used it to reach thousands of people across Canada. Uh, we have four sites, and we continue to grow and just uh, really celebrate what God has done uh, in us and through us and among us. And it's interesting. I want to I want to dip into a few different parts of the Gospel of Matthew because it presents the person of Jesus to us. Um, and and when we read the Gospel of Matthew, we got to understand that. It's presenting a biography of Jesus to us, for all of us, even in the modern world, to scandalize us. Some of us are skeptics. We don't believe in Jesus yet. Some of us have known Jesus our whole life. But the Gospel of Matthew gives us Jesus in a way that makes us all wrestle with the, with the confrontation. What is this guy saying about my life? And it starts off with just telling us where he comes from. And some of us might read it and go like, oh, boring. The whole Gospel of Matthew starts with the genealogy. It's literally like 20 verses long. And so we're like, I'm falling asleep here. But hidden in this genealogy is a massive message for us. It starts out by saying the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And it starts to go down this list. But in the midst of the list, you find these names that kind of stand out. Names like Tamar, Rahab. Rahab, of course, was a prostitute. And it goes all the way down this list, all the way to the person of Jesus and then the Christmas story. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. And you begin to realize, once you start to understand the story, that the names of people in this list are not perfect. They're anything but perfect. Rahab uh, was a prostitute, but how could she be in the genealogy of Jesus? Jesus is supposed to be perfect. And what you and I begin to understand about our own life, there's some of you um, who, who, would, who would say to yourself, God can never use me to do anything. God uses great people and leaders and pastors and all these kind of things to do something good, but you don't know me. You don't know what I did last night. You don't know what I, the, the family I came from. And we read the genealogy of Jesus and we go, wait a minute, this is Jesus and his past is disaster. See, I'm the poster boy for God could never use me to do anything. I come from an atheistic home, never walked into a church until I was 19, agnostic home. My father was so ardently atheistic, he made my mother spell my brother's name, his name was Matthew, with one T, so he wouldn't be biblical. And then four years later, named me Mark. Clearly, he didn't catch the irony of this. If I had another brother, he'd say, let's name him Luke. All right, he'd never opened a Bible before. He passed away when I was 15 years old, uh, never even told me he was sick and never got a chance to say goodbye. My aunt had mental uh, illness. She actually took her own life. Um, I came from, uh, my parents got divorced and I got Tourette's and obsessive compulsive disorder when my parents got divorced as a kid when I was eight or nine years old. And I would randomly swear at people and just kind of say swear words. And it tends to be that the one job you're never going to get when you randomly just swear at people is a pastor. And yet, God called me to this because here's the reality. God doesn't use you to impact people and influence people because of you. He uses you in spite of you, in spite of your past, in spite of your flaws and your weaknesses. He takes the foolish things of the world to glorify himself because of the person and work of Jesus. And so for those of you out here who are wondering, I don't think God could ever use me to do anything, read the genealogy of Jesus and recognize he will use you not because of you, but in spite of you, because, not because you were good, but because he is good. He's going to do something amazing in your life if you let him, even in the context of your weakness.